When you see the OE error message on your LG washer, that pretty much means there's something wrong with your drain pump. Mine suddenly isn't pumping water out, and there's a weird noise when it should be draining. So in this video, I'll walk you through detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the drain pump on an LG front-loading washer. And I encourage you to watch the whole video before beginning your own repair, so you're familiar with the process. To start out, there are two brackets in the back of the washer that need to come out. I'm working in a really tight space, so I didn't slide my washer out. But here, a short stubby Phillips screwdriver helped me get these screws out, even though there was very little space to work with. With both brackets out, I can take the top off by sliding it back and lifting it off. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but now's a good time to unplug the washer if you haven't already. Okay, so now slide the detergent tray out. And to remove it, press on the center tab to release the catch. For the front control panel, there are three screws that need to come out. The first two are at the detergent tray opening. And when taking any of the screws out, Keep them in order off to the side so they're easy to identify later. The third screw is actually on the inside on the right. Okay, so at the top of the front panel, there are two locking tabs where my fingers are pointing. You can actually see them better here from the back side. Simply lift these tabs up a bit and the control panel will be released. Slowly pull this up and you may have to undo a twist tie on the wire so there's enough slack to set this panel on top of the washer like I did. Next, keep a towel handy and open the front panel door and drain the water out of the rubber tube. When all the water is out, untwist the coin basket and watch out for any additional water. The drain door also needs to come out at this time. Now there's one more screw here that needs to come out and this one holds the inner cover on. This will just lift right out. And take out one last screw down here in the sheet metal. Now open the glass door and we'll need to take out the retaining ring that goes around the big rubber seal. At the bottom, there's a spring holding the tension of the ring. To remove it, Carefully wedge a screwdriver under the spring and start pulling the ring out of the rubber seal. It won't take much to get this off, but it's extremely difficult to get back on, which I'll explain later. And now detach the rubber seal from the opening of the washer. On the door latch, there's actually a wiring harness for the electronic lock here. Some people say to unplug this wire clip, but I tried several times and I couldn't get it off. So instead, I just took the latch off by removing the two screws that hold it on. This will actually detach it from the front of the washer. And now we have to take out the six screws holding the front of the washer on. Hopefully you'll agree that so far everything's been pretty easy. And remember to keep all these screws organized when you take them out. You'll see towards the end of the video how I organized them so I knew exactly which screws go where when putting the washer back together. And there's actually quite a few things that have to be removed before actually getting to the pump itself. When the front of the washer is loose, just tilt it back a bit and it can be lifted out. But be careful when grabbing it because there are definitely sharp edges on the metal. Now to the pump. On some LG washers, there are screws on the front that hold the pump assembly on. But on mine, it's not that easy. There are two bolts near the front and one in the back that need to come out. But first, use some pliers to loosen the clamps for the tubes up on top. You'll be able to slide these off, but keep a towel handy for any water that might drip out. Now do the same for the larger green tube on the left. This is the drain tube that goes into the wall behind the washer. And finally, remove the large tube on the back of the pump assembly. This one is harder to get to, but it's not too hard to get off. Now I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket to take off the three bolts I mentioned earlier. For the one on the right, I use a three inch extension since there's not much clearance here. For the left and back, I needed an eight inch extension so I could reach the bolts. And this is much easier to do with all the drain tubes removed, especially the bolt in the back. 
but there's much more clearance without the tubes in the way. And before unplugging any wires, take note of the wire colors and where they're plugged into. It might help to snap a photo so you can see where they were before, because there's nothing worse than forgetting where all the wires go when you're trying to finish up. But once the wires are loose, the pump assembly can come out. I actually made a post-it note of the wires before continuing on with the rest of the job. Okay, so onto the assembly. The actual pump is on the left side and is held in with three screws. After I took the third one out, I thought the pump was free, but I found that the mounting plate on the bottom was still holding it in. So take out the screws on the front and back, and then two on the bottom. With the mounting plate off, the water pump can now be removed. And right away, I can see that the impeller has broken completely off the pump shaft, so this definitely has to be replaced. I had ordered a new pump ahead of time from Amazon, and I recommend you do the same before you start your own repair. But first, we need to take the white cover off the old pump. Just flex the plastic open a bit and slide the pump out. There's going to be some coils on the bottom that stick out, but this will come off pretty easily. And now we can start the reverse process of reassembling the washer. Slip the white cover onto the new pump. And here you can see that I marked where the wires go to eliminate any guessing when I plug this back in. And remember when I said organize all the screws that were removed? Here's what I did. I placed them all in clockwise order in a container so I can pretty much pick them up in reverse when I need them. Okay, so now let's attach the pump onto the drain joint. There are tabs that lock it in place, and please take note of the orientation of the pump when I attach this. Secure the pump on with three screws. Next, reattach the mounting plate. This one has four screws that hold it on. At this point, slide the pump assembly back into the washer. Make sure to line it up with the opening on the front. Now, reattach the wires. You can see why it's helpful to label the contacts on the back of the pump. I did the same on the other connections so there's no question on where to plug the wires in. Once it's wired back up, I can reattach the pump assembly to the frame with three bolts. Again, I'm using a 10mm socket for these. Don't worry if there's some play here because the rubber gaskets on the bottom dampen the vibrations from the washer. And now reattach all the tubing using pliers to help with the clamps. Once the tubes are in, the front can be reattached. The front panel will slip into three tabs on the bottom to hold it in place. Here, there are six screws that secure the front panel to the washer, but I'm only going to attach the middle two at this time. Now reattach the electronic door latch with the two screws on the front. At this point, I'll put in the rest of the screws for the front panel. I can't remember exactly why I didn't put them all in before, but now they're all there. At the bottom, put in the screw near the drain area. Then, replace the plastic box and secure it in place with the gray screw. Put the coin basket back in and then reattach the cover. With the control panel, insert the bottom into the washer and slip it into place. We're getting close to finishing, but I'm saving the best for last and it's the most difficult part of this whole thing. But let's attach the top cover first and then screw in the two brackets on the back. Once the brackets are in place, the washer is all back together. The very last thing we'll do is put the retaining ring back on. And it's easily the most frustrating part. I tried to do this by hand using screwdrivers many times but I could not get it back on. I've seen some videos that make it look easy, but the spring on the ring is extremely tight. So I recommend ordering a spring extension tool before starting this repair. It only costs $12.
There's a groove in the rubber that helps hold it on when you fold it over. Now we're ready to install the dreaded retaining ring. And if I didn't have this spring expansion tool, I think it's impossible to put the ring back on without injuring fingers or damaging the rubber seal. So place the ring at the top of the gasket while positioning the spring exactly at the bottom. Now slip the tips of the expansion tool into the spring. And there are a couple of small grooves that will keep it from slipping off. This tool is definitely a lifesaver because that spring is super tight and I didn't have anything around the house that could stretch this out. In under 10 seconds with this tool, the ring is back on and this repair is complete. My washer now works like normal and water is pumping out just like before. I've listed the $25 pump and $12 expansion tool in the description so it's easy for you to find. Hopefully you can see that this is a repair that you can actually do yourself. There's no need to call a repairman. If you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this.